و صلی الله علی محمد و آله الطاهرین It's a great honor and pleasure to be here in Karachi and I want to thank you all for giving me this opportunity to share a few moments with you in the next few days inshallah and also I want to thank the the Haji family and brother Reza Iqbal for their hospitality and for inviting me here I want to speak a few words on Tawheed and then after that we'll see which direction we'll go inshallah. Tawheed is the essence of Islam. It's the essence of religion. And religion is only one. We don't have two religions. This Tawheed may be understood to different degrees and that's okay everyone to their own degree but it's important to have a good understanding of this Tawheed because everything in Islam all aspects of Islam are traced back to Tawheed and if we don't trace it back to Tawheed that is a deficiency on our part so it has to be understood Imam Khomeini rahmatullah, when he wrote a letter to the then president of the Soviet Union Gorbachev in the late 80s it was a political letter but it was also a spiritual letter to the West in general on how to understand Islam and this is Imam Khomeini his approach after all he was a leader the way he introduced Islam and how people in the West should understand Islam was one's quest towards perfection Look, everyone is after perfection. It's something predestined in everyone. Be you Muslim or non-Muslim, everyone is after perfection and it's not their choice either. It's predestined. Everyone is on the journey towards perfection whoever you are whoever says I'm not after perfection or happiness or salvation there's something wrong with them there's something wrong with their psychology it's not normal now someone may say I'm after perfection and that perfection is starting a business someone may say I'm after perfection too what is it they say I'm going to go and steal from people's homes look it doesn't matter they're both after perfection they may err they may make a mistake in the application but even the thief who goes and steals if you were to ask them why did you do that they would say albeit with a distorted lifestyle they would say this is I'm after perfection that is what they see perfection in it's a mistake but still they're after perfection they've seen it in the wrong thing but for them that is their perfection so look when you start with very basic premises very simple things like I exist you exist things around me exist animals plants stones these are things that these are self-evident truths these things are existing around us another self-evident premise is that these different things 
that exist around us, they vary in their degrees of perfection. For example, an animal may manifest and disclose and show more attributes of perfection than a plant. And a plant may show more attributes of perfection than a stone. And so on and so forth. Or a human being may show more attributes of perfection than an animal. So the degrees of the Per, the, the degrees of perfection vary, but we see it around us. Now sometimes, maybe, it's not impossible, maybe an animal may show more attributes of perfection than a human being. It's possible. But for now, that which we know is that things around us exist, and when we look at different things, they vary in their degrees of perfection. Okay? And also, I am after perfection. That was a predestined reality. No one can say, I'm not after perfection. That was something predestined. So everything around us, they exist to varying degrees of perfection, and I am after perfection. So the journey has started. It doesn't matter whether you're Muslim or non-Muslim. The journey for everyone has started with these basic premises. So, some people, when they get a good car or a house, a car has degrees of perfection with it. A house also has degrees of perfection. Some people go for a car, look for a car, because they're after perfection. They look for a house because they're after perfection. But some people, they stop with the house. When they get a good car, they stop with a good car. It's as if, it's as if they don't see anything more perfect than, for example, a Ferrari or a big house. There's nothing wrong with a big car and a big house. But they see this as the most perfect thing their journey towards perfection stops for some people it stops with a big car a big house a good job it stops there some people now who is who is one's mentor here it's one's rationality be you muslim or non-muslim you have aql you have rationality this rationality says that this house this car has a degree of perfection, that's why I'm wanted, because I'm after perfection. But then, if your act is working normally, and it's not distorted or hindered, your aql will say, it's good, the car, the house is good, the job is good, but I'm after something more perfect. It's a very important step. If you make that call that I'm after something more perfect than a house, you're growing. You'll get your growing towards perfection. You didn't stop with the house or the car. And then someone with their rationality, they're looking for something more perfect. And for example, they go and learn knowledge or a certain book this book has more degrees of perfection than a house. Some people though, they stop at university with the certificate. In the seminary schools with the certificate. They think that is the most perfect thing. Some people though say no. Education is good. The hose, the university is good. But I am after something more perfect. My quest towards perfection has no limit. You can't stop me unless my rationality is barred or isn't functioning as it should do. Some people may say that the holy book, they do their research for something even more perfect, they find the holy book. 
Some people stop with the holy book. Some people find something, are looking for something more perfect. Some people may then find a prophet and say, this is the most perfect thing. But even a prophet was born at a certain time. Even a prophet is limited by time and space. But your rationality is still after something more perfect. If it doesn't go wrong, if it doesn't err, rationality will keep on going until it finds absolute perfection. That which is perfect in all aspects and is not limited by any aspect. So even a prophet may be limited and therefore one's rationality says I am after something more perfect be you Muslim or non-Muslim and then eventually if one's aql succeeds and there's no bias be it a cultural bias or another bias which hampers, which hinders, which blocks which inhibits rationality, the aql if none of these hindrances arise, the aql will come to a very important conclusion. And from then on, spirituality starts. And that conclusion is this, that that which is perfect in all aspects is existence, pure existence. Full stop. Look. Pure existence. Not existence in a particular shape or form. But pure existence. That which everything depends upon. Nothing is existence free. It's impossible. Existence always was always will be pure existence doesn't have a beginning it doesn't have an end if pure existence has a beginning what was there before either there was something or no thing if you say there was something that proves the point it's existence if you say there was no thing before the start of pure existence there was no thing nothingness non-existence that's impossible it doesn't exist it's a non-reality there's no such thing as non-existence it all is it's all existence never was there such a thing such as non-existence non-existence is impossible so pure existence always was will always be and everything depends on it nothing is existence free and this existence has to be one you can't have two independent existences everything emanates from existence there's only one type of existence and everything emanates from it nothing is free from it you can't imagine a plant a stone a human a book a glass microphone minus existence it's impossible these are all existing things but in a given shape and form but they all emanate from pure existence what is that pure existence? it's not a theoretical thing because our premises that we started off from was that I exist, you exist we are real things things around us, these things really exist but they all emanate, even our dreams, even angels, they all exist. Whether it's material or it's immaterial, 
it all emanates from pure existence whatever is emanates from pure existence and nothing is existence free and therefore what rationality calls pure existence the theologians call that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala oh, maybe many Muslims we always say, always say Allah Allah but when we ask them okay can you tell us who or what is Allah they don't explain the reality behind this name this label Allah the reality behind it is it's, it's pure existence Allah is pure existence nothing is Allah free everything emanates from him whatever is is a manifestation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala nothing is Allah free and this is what we mean by Tawheed Tawheed means literally assigning oneness that is the meaning of Tawheed assigning oneness and that is that whatever you see wherever you see it it's a manifestation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala فَأَيْنَمَا تَوَلُّوا فَثَمَّ وَجْهُ in Surah Al-Baqarah whichever way you turn there is the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there is the appearance the manifestation of Allah whichever way you turn هُوَ الْأَوَّلُ وَالْآخِرُ وَالْذَاهِرُ وَالْبَاطِنُ Allah He is the first, the last, the outer, the inner of anything nothing is Allah free nothing is existence free no one is saying the sun is Allah no no one is saying the moon the person the animal is Allah what we're saying is whatever is is manifesting pure existence is a manifestation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this manifestation in and of itself has no reality if you imagine a clothes shop in a clothes shop a pair of trousers a pair of gloves a hat but that hat is a label a pair of trousers is a label what are they what 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 are the pair of trousers what are the pair of gloves the hat the shirt it's nothing but thread it's all thread it's all manifesting thread the hat is nothing in itself it's all thread but it's thread manifesting in a particular form a particular shape but it's all thread the reality of the hat and the reality of the shirt and the reality of the pair of trousers it's one it's all thread but this thread manifests in different ways when you go we see the trousers the shirt the hat but the spiritual person sees nothing but thread in this world too we get lost with the sun the moon the house the car the spouse the job the, the sun the, the animal the plant the stone but it's all nothing but pure existence كُلَّ يَوْمٍ هُو فِي شَعْن every yawm yawm meaning not a 24 hour period it means manifestation that's why we call day yawm because it's manifesting what we couldn't see at night every manifestation is who it's him Allah but in dimension فِي شَعْن Look, Allah manifests in different ways but it's all Him manifesting and so we this is absolute perfection pure existence Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if we want to recognize 
absolute perfection. If we want to recognize pure existence, what do we have to do? Recognizing, in the language of the Quran, it's called Irfan. The, the Quran uses the word Arafa for recognizing. Here, we want to recognize Allah. We want to recognize absolute perfection, which is pure existence. And when we say, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدٌ اللَّهُ السَّمَدٌ لَمْ يَلِدْ وَلَمْ يُولَدْ وَلَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُ كُفُوًا أَحَدٌ Say, who? Who isn't a pronoun, like him. It's a name of Allah. It means who? Pure existence. Allah is a zahiri, external name that the theologians use. In akhlaq, in spirituality, they say who? In theology, we say Allah. Say him, Allah. Ahad, Allahu Ahad. This pure existence is one. It's a one which doesn't have any two or three or four. Because everything is a manifestation of this one. And this one has to be eternal and infinite because it has no beginning, it has no end. All this, our rationality helps us. It doesn't matter if you're Muslim or non-Muslim. It has to be one. Because it's pure existence. It's infinite. It has no beginning. It has no end. It's Samad. Samad means Nothing is empty of Allah. Nothing is empty from of pure existence. Nothing is existence free. Lam Yalid. When a mother gives birth to a child, the child becomes independent from the mother. But Allah, Lam Yalid, nothing becomes independent from pure existence. Everything emanates from pure existence, but they don't become independent from pure existence. Wa Lam Yulad, this pure existence wasn't given birth to. Pure existence isn't a small part of a bigger picture. It's the whole picture. It's all existence. It has no like. So look, when Stephen Hawking, when he says that there may be a creator, but we don't need the creator for the running of the earth, for the running of the planet, we don't need the Creator. He's right in a way. It depends on how you describe Allah. If you describe Allah as separate and independent from creation, Stephen Hawking is right. But if you describe Allah as Hawal Awalu Wal Akhiru Wal Dahiru Wal Batin and if you describe Allah as pure existence, not even Stephen Hawking can deny Allah. He can't because it's like denying existence, saying existence doesn't exist. Look. It all depends on how you describe Allah. This understanding of once upon a time, there's Allah and nothing. And then Allah creates something out of nothing. This is a deficient understanding of Tawheed. Don't get me wrong, it's not haram. It's deficient. There are more perfect ways of understanding Tawheed. Because here you see Allah on one side and then nothing. Well, nothingness doesn't exist. That's one problem. Non-existence is a non-reality. Where is it? What is it? It's non-existence. Then you say Allah created something out of nothing. That's the second problem. 
How can existence come out of non-existence? It's a contradiction in terms. And then let's say, let's imagine that is possible. That Allah creates something from no thing. That something which Allah creates is independent from Allah now. Look. It's independent from Allah. And therefore your understanding of Allah is Allah is just Allah one side, creation one side, and Allah is just monitoring things. Allah is just monitoring things. In Usul Kafi, one of the companions of Imam Sadir said, Allahu Akbar. Allahumma sadda ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa ajifah. The companion said, Allahu Akbar. The Imam said, what do you mean? The companion said, Allah is greater than everything. The Imam replied, Haddadtahu. You've limited Allah. Look, you've limited Allah. Why? Why did this person limit Allah? Because he saw Allah on one side, he saw creation on the other side and these two are independent and mutually exclusive to one another and then he said Allah is bigger than everything else there you've limited Allah those things are not independent from Allah Lam Yalid Lam Yalid another companion also said Allahu Akbar, the Imam went a bit further. When the person replied that Allahu Akbar is Allah is bigger than everything, the Imam said, is there anything? Is there anything for you to say Allah is greater than that? Look. Meaning what? There's no thing independent from Allah. It's all Him. In, diff in dimension it's all a manifestation of him there's no thing on the other side for you to compare Allah and that thing and it's all a manifestation of Allah and so you shouldn't prove Allah in the way that if you see smoke it proves there's a fire somewhere and then you say, since there's a sun and a moon, there must be a creator. No, because that smoke and that fire, you're looking at it as two separate things. But with Allah, it's all a manifestation of Him. How can you prove Allah through His manifestations? When you, when you see it as a manifestation of Allah, right, then it's Allah. You're not proving him. Okay, so here, this is absolute perfection. If our aql is functioning normally, we will never stop until we understand this. That I am after absolute perfection, and I keep on going until I understand it. However, this is just an academic exercise for now. We want to recognize it. Look, sometimes you learn of something, but the Quran speaks of recognition. We want to recognize absolute perfection. There's one verse of the Quran which uses the word Arafa, Irfan. Wajaa ikhwato Yusufa fadakhalu alay. فَأَرَفَهُمْ وَهُمْ لَهُ مُنْكِرُونَ Very, very important point this. That the brothers of Yusuf السلام, came and entered the presence of Yusuf. So there's Yusuf here and the brothers are here. فَأَرَفَهُمْ Yusuf recognized Yusuf had Irfan recognized the brothers. The brothers were there. The brothers saw Yusuf. But the Quran says, Wahom, the brothers, Lahu, 
in respect in relation to Yusuf, they were monkerun. They denied. Denied meaning they didn't.